Welcome to my channel. My name is Angela and this is my precious Sharon Ring. So today we're going to do um, a tutorial on this these wonderful sweaters that I made. Um, this They're all out of different yarn and I'm going to explain the yarns. So you can you can do this pattern with any yarn and it's I have in there too how you measure it towards your body so there's no measurements. It's custom made to your size. So this one, this is the one I made the tutorial. Out of. It is a four weight yarn. I used Hersner's Worsted Heathered Yarn. It's a gorgeous yarn. This yarn is called Fossil, the colorway. And it's a uh, four medium weight, 100% acrylic, machine wash and dry. So that was this one. And I love it. So that's that one. And I love how you can barely see, like, even the stitches to stitch it up. How I do that. And I show you everything. I show you how to do the straight, to corner it off for the trim. Or you can do the rounded trim. So that was this one. This one here was made out of, now this is actually, you can't buy the big balls like this. You can buy the smaller balls. Now this one I got in a special store. So it's Bernat Wavelength. I don't think you can even get this color anymore. It's pink topaz. And I worked it out because it doesn't have any of the measurements on it. It is 200 grams, 319 yards, approximately 291 meters. And it's, uh, in about 30, yeah. So in this sweater, I had four of these. I had five of these. So I used four plus this, this much. So there's not much taken out of this. I don't agree. This one I made a long time ago, so I don't exactly remember. And then I used an ice churn. And this is called, this one is called Baby Twist Light. That's the number, 69013. And it is a six weight it's a six weight and it's 15% wool 85% acrylic 50 gram balls and 70 meters I used two two bags of this to make this sweater and I only had this much left this is about a size large I'm thinking it's approximately guys <laughs> so that's about a large this is about a 1x and this is about an, a large extra large so yeah so that's what I use so what you need for this tutorial is your yarn I used a 6.5 hook on the four I used an eight on uh, no I used a nine on this one and I believe I do did an, an eight on this one size hooks millimeter and you'll need uh, I recommend stitch markers because I use stitch markers on these sweaters all the time and a darning needle and I hope you enjoy the tutorial thank you everyone okay I just want to come on here and show you what I mean by measuring your length of your sweater everybody's gonna have different preferences where they want it I'm going to show you how now right now this is how I, I measure the length of my of this sweater um, I have 150 chains so I put them together I have a stitch marker on here I put them together that's how long it is so then I put it over my shoulder and then I see where it's gonna land and as you see it's gonna be right here now if you want it shorter if you want it longer it depends how many chains you do everybody's different where they want their sweater to be. Now there's also going to be um, a trim on it, so that'll be 
you can make that as big as you want too and I will show you all that now to and also I will come back on here to show you the what I mean by measuring across here when you get your first bit done okay okay so once you have sorry once you have some of your remember it's going to go this way part done you want to make sure and have it so it goes to here because this is where you're going to sew it so here so if it depends how long or wide you want your collar to go and your trim now I want mine I don't want a, such a big collar on this so I will be doing more rows so basically I always go from about here to make sure so I need a few more rows to here and that's how I measure that and then remember when you're doing your sleeves I always keep trying my sleeves on as I go well my first sleeve so I can remember that it comes down your shoulder a bit so keep trying it on and then write down how many and I'll remind you as we're doing the tutorial how many rows you do and how thick you want your collar around your sleeves and that's how I measure my sweater so each sweater will be different your sweater will be different than mine and the rows will be different but it's the same pattern and I will show you how to put it all together but that's how I do my me me um, measurements so I will be back with the rest of the tutorial and well the beginning of the tutorial because you have this is the first part in a bit thank you everyone okay I will be doing the tutorial in a four weight yarn you can use any weight you want it's customized to your size and at the beginning I went through how you measure and everything that you need to know okay so you start I'm assuming you all know how to do chains single crochets and half doubles if you don't know um, there's a lot of youtubers that are great teachers you can go figure go look at their tutorials otherwise this is a pretty easy pattern and it's you can do it even if you're a beginner okay so the first thing I have hundred and fifty stitches you need any or 150 a chain of 150 you need any even number okay so you start with you skip one and a half double crochet in the second chain I always work from the back of the the chain you can work at the front if you want like in your V's or your back I prefer to do the back it just my preference so then you skip one a single crochet in that next one with in the same stitch you put a half double crochet skip one a single crochet and a half double skip a stitch single crochet and then a half double crochet and you work that all the way down and I will meet you at the end okay I'm at the end I have two stitches left so I'm going to just put a single crochet in that last stitch this pattern always starts and ends at this as the exact same so um, you start by chain one and turn and a half double crochet in that first space right there half double crochet right in there and then you're working you're going to be working in these spaces it's very easy so you can just watch TV and it, you won't mess up so you work in these little holes right there you see them all so what you do so basically is you skip one single crochet and a half double in the same stitch and then you skip one single crochet and half double and you just work that all the way down
until you hit the end. And I'll meet you at the end to show you again how you start, how you stop and finish a row. Okay, so I have one more spot to put my single crochet and half double crochet. And then I have one stitch left. I just do a single crochet. I chain one, turn my work, and then a half double right in there. And that's how you stop and start each row every single time. And then you start again in your hole. You do a single crochet, half double crochet, single crochet, half double. Okay, so you keep going until you get um, the side of your back and half your panel done in the front. And I'll meet you back. Okay, so I have my front panel and part of my back panel done. I can't get it all on, but that's what I got done. Every number will be different. It's all customized to you and how big or small you make it. Now I, so for this part here, so this is half my panel. So I counted, I have to count, you have to count these little shells that we made, they're like little bumps, and I have 74. So half of 74 is 37. So 37 bumps I put in a stitch marker. Now what you have to make, so this is your front panel and then you have to make the rest of your back panel. So you're going to you have to crochet only half the panel now. So this is my first stitch. So I hope this makes sense. So now that you have your first front panel done, you have to make, so say this is your first front panel, you have to make the other front panel but that's not coming yet. You have to make the rest of your back panel in the middle where your collar is going to go to so the sweater will fit you. How many rows that will be, that's up to you. You just you put it up against you and it's like I showed you earlier how you get how wide you want your first panel. I did my panel has 26 rows here. I'll probably add another probably about that much. Let me get a tape measure one sec. Okay so you probably want another four to four and a half inches on that's for me that's how much I would want now for you all you have to do is put this side on your other side and see how much you have in the middle that you need to cover the rest of the back and that's how many rows you go it's not um, it, it's just winging it you just see it's up to you how big you want your sweater, how baggy. I like a bit good baggy sweater. So it'll probably be four, four and a half inches more. And depending how many rows that will be. And then when I get back, I'll, I'll tell you how many rows I did. And then I have to add a chain and I will come back and show you how to add that chain. But for now, we're going to only work until the stitch marker. So, because you don't want to put any more on your one front panel. So only work to your stitch marker. Hope that makes sense. It'll probably make more sense once you start going and you realize, oh, it just clicks. That's how much you need to, um, you'll know how much more you'll need. Just put it against you and make sure it covers, you can do it on your front, covers your whole chest. This will cover your whole chest. 
once you're done the back and um, your other panel will go it'll go around you to make sure it'll go all the way around you from your sides and then uh, yeah so I'll be rock in one second okay so I made it to my stitch marker so that's my halfway point now if you still don't know exactly how much you need to go across just me if you measure this from your front panel is going from your side under your armpit to your your collarbone make sure this part here the one you're the the, the rest of the back piece in the middle of your back piece because this is where we're doing the middle of the back piece goes to the other side of your collarbone okay so this oh yes you can see it now this is my last stitch my last um, bump here so my little shell so I need to my last one I need to make one single crochet I am not going to put it in the big big one I'm going to put it in the small one the first one I'm not going to skip that stitch and I'm going to chain just do a single crochet chain one and turn my work and then you just put your double crochet in there and then you just keep going all the way down until you get as much as you need to finish off the middle of your back piece and then when we come back I'll show you how, where you have to chain to do this is all one piece so you can chain you'll be chaining to do the the rest of your front the other side of your front panel and the rest of your back piece and I'll be back okay so as you can see this is my back piece I did about a little bit less than four and a half and it was I did one two three four five six seven, about 11 rows so what I have to do now is the rest of the the back piece and the other front panel so what I'm going to do here so my last stitch this is usually my turning stitch but I got to make it into a shell so I'm gonna just put a shell in that last stitch and then I'm gonna chain 75 so that 75 is half of 150 which is the chain I started with and then it'll be one chain for my turning chain so I just start chaining 75 one and then I will be back to show you what I do then okay so I have my 75 chain and then I'm going to in my second chain from the hook I'm gonna put a double crochet and then I'm gonna skip one and put my shell in there so that's a single crochet and a half double skip one then I'm going to do a single crochet half double and you do that all the way along and I'll meet you where I started my chain okay so I have one more chain left but I'm going to skip that chain and go right into my shell there my um, shell there and then I'm just going to carry on with my pattern the way it is so on this side I'm working the rest of my back and this is my front panel so my other front panel I did uh, 26 rows so I have one row done now almost well over halfway done so I have to do 25 more rows and then I will meet you back okay so you got your two front panels there's one there and one here they're all attached so now you have to 
sew up the sides and you have to make room for your arms. So what I do is I get some stitch markers. I got three stitch markers for each side. And depending how you want, how much room you want in your yarn, um, yarn arm, you have to measure. Now I typically do it about six and a half, seven on all my sweaters, but measure your arm around the big part of your arm to see how much you need, how much room you need. So I do about six and a half and I'll put my stitch marker right in there. And then I just put stitch markers so it will stay together as I sew it right to the end at the two ends. And I do that on both sides and then I sew it up. And I'll be back to show you how I sew it up. Okay guys, I'm gonna show you how I do my sewing on my sweaters. First I need to get some yarn. And I take, now you can't see it all, I take, I make sure I get at least double of what I need of the yarn. Let's see if I can get it a little better. Okay, so I need from here to here. So I take at least double, sometimes even more, because I mean, I need a lot of room for my tail. So as you can see, I'm taking way more than what I need, but that's okay. So then, and you can use any darning needle. I like these metal ones. I always have. Well, not always, but I find that I work wetter, better with the metal, even with crochet hooks. Okay, so I always start at the arm because there's more, I don't know, just it because I got to put a knot there and you can hide it better. Okay, so I'm going to keep my finger there. I'm going to take that off. And I'm going to put it through all four. See, I have all four right there. All four parts that I need. I'm going to tie a knot. Now you can do this any way you want. This is how I do it. And then, get a good knot. So this is, um, this sweater will be inside out now. Okay, so I get them lined up again. So now I go in the back loop and the front loop of my work, of my uh, stitches. Of course, things aren't going to work out good for me. <laughs> and I do that. So now I went that way, so now I'm going to come this way and go through the, the back. I'm going to do that all the way down. And I'm really careful on how my seam looks because I'm a little stickler about that. I want a nice seam. And if I don't, if I get a, a loop twice, that's okay. If I miss one, I don't like to miss one, but if I get it twice, that's okay. And try to keep it loose, not too tight but not too loose either, because you want a good seam. Okay, and you go all the way down. And I'll come back when I'm at the end. Okay, so I'm pretty much close to my end. A few more stitches to get through. Okay. At my last one. 
but I have to, I want to be careful when I'm down here because I do want to put a trim on here and if you pull your stitches too tight down here then it's hard and you already got a there's a tail that has to be sewn in there okay so I'm already at the end now I want to sew this tail in now so I don't have to cut it and then sew it in later it's just so I just go through my stitches very carefully so not to make it too tight but I want it secure make sure this part stays loose by the seam and I will go down make sure I do it three times so up once down well up twice actually so I went up once I'm going down one more once and then one more time going up and then I just cut it and this is what your seam will look like on the other side really can't really tell that much we can but not when you're wearing it you wouldn't be able to tell love it okay so the other side sew up and I will be back to do the sleeves okay guys it's time to do the sleeves so my cardigan is not inside out it's right side in and I'm gonna show you where I'm working from just get my yarn ready so I'm look there's my sleeve and I'm looking at it that's the wrong way this is the right way so I'm pulling the sleeve at like around where it's seamed up and it's not down the armpit all I can say is I don't know how many rows I'm doing on each cardigan until I try it on like the sleeves until I try it on and I probably will try try the sleeves about five times just to make sure now I will be putting a cuff on this so I will be leaving a probably about a two inch gap on the sleeve and I like my sleeves to go about to here just because I like my sleeves longer now you do it the way you want to so I'm looking at the join here and I'm going to join right there Can anybody, everybody see that Probably better this way. So I'm going to join on the other side. So what I'm going to do is a standing single crochet. So if you don't know how to do a standing single crochet, you have your yarn attached. Pull through your yarn. So you have two loops and do a single crochet. So that's a standing single crochet. And I'm just going to go right into the pattern. Standing single crochet and then a half double crochet. And then I'm going to go right into this side with a single crochet and a half double crochet. And I will be able to tell where I'm going to be putting See, there's these holes where I'm going to be putting my hook. So I'm going to skip this one and go to this one. And I do this all the way around, but so I'm skipping this one and going to this one. So I'm going to skip this one here. Well, this one here. And I'm going right into this one. Skip that one and go into that one. And you have to count how many of these little shells you're putting in. So you can make it on the other side the same. Or at least as close as you can. If you're one, one off, that's fine. That's not a, not a big deal. But you don't want to be like three off. Two, even two is a little much, but you can get away with it. So you go all the way around and I'll meet you at the join and don't forget to count okay so I've went all the way around and as you can see I 
have like these two holes left, but it would be too close to this one if I did one there. So I'm just going to close it from here. And all I'm going to do is attach it to that standing single crochet. And then I just, what I do is I pull my, this little knot where my, I put my yarn together. And you can see where you can put it in. So that right hole right there. And I'm going to do a slip stitch. Then I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn it. And I'm just going to go right into there with a half double. And then you can see your pattern much better this way again. So it's the same pattern. All the way around. And don't forget, we had to count. I forgot to count. Just hold on. So I got 20. Now your yours could be different. You could have measured different than I, but I got 20. So the next my other yarn arm will be 20 or 19 or 21. It one stick one bump doesn't mean much, but you don't want to have it too different. So then you just keep going all the way around. And I will meet you again to show you how you turn, attach and turn. Okay, I've made it all the way around again. So I'm going to attach in this one right here. This would be your um, half double crochet. But that's okay. It doesn't make, you'd think it would make it smaller when you attach there. It doesn't. So you attach and turn again. You chain one and turn. And then you go into this one right here with a half double crochet and then start your pattern again. Now, it, to determine how many rows you need, you would need to keep trying it on. And remember, your measuring it just doesn't, to me, doesn't do it right because you don't know where, because this goes off the shoulder, the, the main part of the pattern goes down the shoulders. I'm sorry the dogs are in a mood and they decided that they want to play while I'm filming of course. So it goes down the shoulder a bit so once you get it um, all sewed up and start your yarn your arm it's going to be long and a lot of people make that mistake and just measure thinking it'll work and then your arms are way too long. So just keep trying it on. Everyone will have different numbers, so I can't, I'm can't. i just going to tell you what I'm doing and what numbers I come up with. This will be a large, extra large sweater when it's done. Okay, I will be back um, to show you how to do the trim, and then we'll be done the sweater. Okay, as you can see, I'm done this arm, and I put stitch markers in to help me keep the count. I did 35 rows all together. So I'm going to chain one and turn my work. Now this is pretty big for me and I don't like to have a big cuff. So I like to go, I will go around and do some single crochets together so I don't have, so I can shrink it up. So I chained one, turned, so I'll do a single crochet together and I'll do two just keep going around doing two together and I'll do that all the way around and I'll meet you when I'm done Okay, I made it all the way around. Now I have these two. Now use, basically I only have one, but I'm gonna do the two together. If you have one, do one, doesn't matter. And then I'm going to slip stitch together. Now I won't be turning my work anymore. 
because I want my single crochets to be all on one side. So I chain one, and how I know how good it is, I put my wrist in and see how it feels. Now I have that much, I have about that much space. So now I'm going to do every other, so I chain one single crochet and then I'm going to do every other one together, every one, every other single crochet together. And I'll do that all the way around. Now you don't have to do this, you don't even have to put um, a cuff on there if you don't want to. You can do whatever you want, it's your sweater. So where was I? Okay, I will meet you when I get back. Okay, I went all the way around. I just have one more decrease to do. That's the word I was looking for, the decrease. Okay, and then in here, let's slip stitch together, maybe. And then I'm going to check that. Yep, that's. I think that's good for me. Okay, so now this one, I'm going to just do single crochets all the way around. No decreasing, no nothing. Just all the way around, one row of single crochets. And I did not turn my work. And I'll meet you at the end. Okay, I'm just doing my last one. And then I'm going to slip stitch together. Okay, so just check it to make sure my rings getting caught yeah I like that okay so now I'm gonna start on um, the cuff so depending how long I want the trim like it would be the cuff like this your trim is how long I will do a chain so I want it to be one two three four five six so I'm gonna be about that long you can do it any way any length you want bigger smaller whatever so I did seven and I'm going to skip this one I'm working in the back loops so I'm gonna skip this one and do a single crochet in the next now this one now this it gets a little fit, fit, fiddly but that's okay. And I do single crochets down six stitches. You got to remember that six stitches. So six chain of six. So you're always chain of seven. Sorry. So you're always going to have uh, six stitches to work with. And you have to do it on the same as uh, on the other side. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I made my way all the way down. Now I'm going to slip stitch in the next two stitches. Chain one and just turn it like that. And you're only going to be working in your back loops, only in your back loops now. And it's going to be single crochets in your back loops all the way down or up I guess that would be this way just single crochets in your back loop okay chain one turn and now you're going to do single crochets down the other way only in the back loops and you're only doing six well I'm doing six it could be different for you and I keep counting just just in case I missed a stitch or right here always um, messes me up so one two three four five six okay so then I 
slip, stu slip stitch in the next two again, chain one, turn, and then I'm going to keep doing that all the way around and I'll meet you back here when it's time to join your cuff. Okay guys, so we're going to pretend this is my whole sleeve. <laughs> Listen, I messed up, so I had to fix it. So this is my whole sleeve. Everybody use their imagination and I doing this part of the sleeve, like the trim. And I just wanted to show you how to finish it off. So what you have to do, I have one stitch left right here. I have this one stitch left that I have to slip stitch. If you have two, you slip stitch in both, work your way up and back down. If you have one, it could be different for everybody. If you have one, like me, you just slip stitch in that one. If you slip stitch in the two, you slip stitch the two and carry on. So I only have one, so I slip stitch that one and then I work my way back up the trim. All the way up, all my six. You know, you could have different. If you, so I only did one slip, so I'm there. That's it. If I did two, I would chain one and go back down. Go back down, but I didn't. I am done there. So to put this together, I am going to. I'm going to turn it and I'm going to go in the back loops. I'm only working in the back loop still, but I'm only going to be doing, I'm going to hook it into there and I keep going all the way down the back loop and I'll show you what I mean. So I got that back loop and then I'm going to go over here and grab this back front loop and, you, and I'm going to slip stitch. See what I'm doing? Slip stitch all the way down. Now, if you had to do, if you had two slip stitch for the trim link and you had to do another row of single crochets, you just work your way up putting it together. You work your way all the way down. Okay. So I make sure there's not a big hole there. Nope. Then I chain one and then I cut and that's it. That's all how you put it together. There you go. And I'll be back with the next video. Okay, I just want to show you something before I moved on to the trim. This is... Oh, I broke another one. This is the sleeve but this is under the armpit now I have a couple big holes there so I'm going to take my tail here maybe and I'm going to fix that I mean you don't have to I just prefer it you won't see it it's under the arm but I just want it to look a little more tidy so I will just when I do my weaving in my tail anyways, I might as well fix that hole. Well, there was a couple big ones. The other side doesn't have it, but this side does. And you may not have them. You may have one, you may have two, but it's easy to fix. And that's it. That's all you have to do. And I'm gonna go one more time. Pull my, cut my yarn and that's it and I'll be right back to show you the trim okay so I have it the right side facing me of the sweater and I'm going to connect my yarn to the one corner make sure I have a good tail and then I'm just going to connect it right in that 
corner spot as best as I can find it. And then I'm going to chain, I'm going to, don't know how long, I, I want it a, a fairly big, um, a fairly big one. Now you don't have to have your trim this big, but I would like it. So I'm going to ch chain 20 to start. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. So I'm pretty happy with that, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got this little stitch marker, and I'm going to put it in my last, just so I don't have to count them every time. Nobody wants to count, every, like it's 20, so then I don't have to count the rows and then I can just keep going. And I, so it's the same as the sleeve. So I turn my work, what is going on here? And I work in the back humps, but you don't have to, I do. So I'm actually gonna do 21, so I have a chain of 20. And in the, my second stitch from the hook, second chain from the hook, I'm going to work in my back humps all the way down, just like we did with the sleeves. And I'll meet you when I'm done. Okay, so I made it all the way down to my stitch marker. And then I'm just going to do that last stitch there. Take my stitch marker out and put it in that the next one I just did and then it's just like the sleeves so now I'm going to slip stitch in the next two stitch next slip stitch not single crochet and then I'm going to turn my work and see it's it helps me a lot better because these kind of look like stitches here but they're not that is my first stitch and I'm going to take that out and work in my back loop. And then I'm going to put my stitch marker back in. And I like using these little ones for it because they don't open and close. And just pull it. And then I work all the way down and all the way up again, just like the sleeve. Okay. Um, I will meet you when we get to the other corner and then I'll show you what to do if you don't want to do a rounded trim or if you want to do a straight trim. Okay, so I'm about to, I'm at the end. So what I want to do, I got to change my stitch marker. I'm at the corner and I only have one stitch left and then I'm at the corner. So I only slip stitch once. Now if you have a slip stitch of two, like if you do two slip stitches, they have two stitches left, you go up and then you go all the way down and then you cut your yarn and then you attach here. This if this is if you want to have like your your corner squared off. Now if you want to do it rounded like I want to do you and you have two stitches I only have one you just you do it and you go up one and you come down again and cut your yarn and then attach it at the corner your last stitch right here this stitch you attach it there now I only have one so if I was going to I'll show you what I'm going to do so I went slip stitch once and I chained one and then I turn and then I start on going right into the back loops. Get this. And you make your, I'm going to make my way all the way up in the back loops. Now I still have 20 stitches. You, 
depending on whatever you wanted to do, that's what you have on your your trim. Now let's say I wanted to square it off from here. So I just make my way to the end. And then if I was squaring it off, I'd do my last, last stitch and I would chain 20 or I would match it up. Let's just say that's 20. I'd turn and then I'd start doing my, in the back loops, well in the back bumps, then the back loops and then I'd use, then I'd go all the way up doing here. Now I am not going to be, I want to do it rounded, so I'm going to make my way back, my 20 stitches, just got to get some yarn, always in the back loop. And then I, well, let me stop it and I'll come back when I'm at the back loop, when I'm at the, this one. Okay, so I made it back to where the 20th stitch right before I slip stitch. I'm going to put my stitch marker back in there. And then I want to do the curves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep going in that same stitch just once. Just slip stitch once in that corner stitch. I've already slip stitched in it once to do the going up and down. I'm going to slip stitch it in again and keep going. I'm going to go change my stitch marker. So I'm going to keep going in that, I'm going up and down again and I'm going to still put about, do it about five times. So I'll get that rounded edge into um, my trim instead of the corner, like it wouldn't be a corner, it'd be a rounded edge. But I go on the same, that corner stitch about five times. Go all the way up. And I'll meet you when I have made it all the way up. I'll meet you when I'm back at, when I get all the way down again. Okay, I'm back there again. I'm going back into there, slip stitch once, chain one, turn my work, and I'm going back up. Now you have to keep track of how many times you actually do, because sometimes you might want to go, you know, um, I've always done it at least five. Sometimes I've done it six. And I always keep a track of how many times I do go into that stitch because I have to do it at the other corner the same amount of times. So I'm going to keep doing this and I'll come back when I feel that and I'll tell you how many times I went into that um, corner stitch and how many times I'm going to be doing it at the other end. Okay, so I ended up doing it about six times. So now, instead of going into that corner, now I go into my stitches up here. And they're not really stitches, they're, you just even them out, even your slip stitches out. And then I just carry on with the trim all the way around. Now, you gotta remember when you started this you you started in a corner so you already have one slip stitch in the corner so now I will have to remember to only do five slip, slip stitches in that corner and go all the way up and all the way down five times all together now uh, I will meet you when I get back to the other corner to see how many stitches I have left if I have 
like this one worked out great I only had the one but if I have two I will show you what I it's basically the it's the same thing you just make sure you, you always count the, at least the first one and then I do it five more times so six all together into that spot and then I will show you how I close it close it up and I will be back okay so I'm done here so I have one stitch left I'm gonna put it right in there and then I'm also going to do a slip stitch right into the corner now I have to go in there five times all together now if I had to say I had this stitch and did this stitch but I've already worked in this stitch so but just say that I did that I would go up and down and then I just put one stitch in the corner and do it six well I've six times but I've already done it once so I only have to do it five more times so yeah that's basically it so I just for me because I only have the one left slip stitch there and then slip stitch in that corner spot without getting the tail in there slip stitch in there chain one turn and then go up and down and then I would go into that corner four more times all together because I've already did it twice now that one was the one and then I started in the corner so I only have to do it four more times and I will be back to show you how to put it together okay so I just got done my last stitch I don't need this stitch marker anymore so now what we're going to do is put this together it's the same way we did the sleeves so I want you to chain one so we can turn it a little bit and then let's get the camera right we are going to go into these chains again now that'll be the chick the tricky part but that's okay we can do this and just take one just one strand from each side and just slip stitch it all together now if you got a little hole there which I do I can take my I have a thread here one of my ends I will sew that together so it's no big deal you won't even see it so just go through do this all the way down and you only need one stitch from each side and you won't even tell where you did it because it'll look like all your lumps your all your lines there gonna show you how I do it and I mean if you have a better way go ahead do it it's your sweater this is just the way I do it I'm sure you could sew it up just as good but I'm not doing that <laughs> okay I will meet you at the end okay so I'm already at the end so I just chained one and then I cut my yarn, long tail, and I just pull my hook through, and that's it. And that's how it looks. Let's see. See? Can't really even. That's where I slip stitched it together. So, I hope you enjoyed your this tutorial. And, yeah, just sew your ends and your sweater's done. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you soon. Bye, everyone.